Happy Friday! Welcome to the second week of the Gingham Quilt Along. Um, thanks to everyone who posted your fabric polls online. Um, and congratulations, Jenna Quilts, for winning the first week's contest. So congratulations. This week's prize um, is pretty practical because it's related to this week's steps. Um, this week's winner will get their choice of a uh, quilt square monogram that they can use in their quilt or use in a future quilt or whatever they want to use it in and a spool of orofil thread because we're going to be sewing together some strip sets so this week's prize is really really practical um and to be eligible for the prize all you have to do is post your progress from the week so i want to make this quilt along pretty laid back so don't worry if you're behind or you're just starting your poll or whatever um because what i'll do is just take the time frame number all the photos do a random uh, number generator from the photos from this week so it doesn't matter if you're a step ahead or a step behind, you'll be entered just the same. Just post a, a progress photo with the hashtag uh, gingham quilt along and you'll be all set. So without any further ado, let's hop into working with strip sets. So funny enough, because of the pressing directions in this quilt, it's pretty difficult to get things completely out of square. So you could even break all of these, all of the you know rules, if you will, um, to quilting and you're still going to come out with, you know, with corners that meet perfectly fine because all of the seams nest. So just make sure um, you're always pressing towards your half tone and all of your seams will nest. So even though we're going to go over some different things to improve your ac accuracy with strip sets, you can break all the rules and it's not a big deal. So, you know, the first one is obviously cut accurately. That's not, you know, that's not a hard one there. Um, I recommend a six and a half by 24 inch ruler to cut this quilt out. Or if you want to use a stripology ruler, you can also use a stripology ruler as well to, to cut your strips. Um, the cutting for this quilt isn't very, um, isn't very complex because you're really only mostly cutting strips with just a, the exception of a couple of squares. So the cutting part is really simple. Um, but there are a few things you can do to just kind of preserve the, the integrity of your strips, if you will. So, if you have fabric that's particularly stretchy, um, wovens are going to be a little more stretchy than your solids. Not by a ton, um, unless you use something really, really thin or something really out of the ordinary. Um, but just keep in mind that they're a little bit stretchy, so you may want to um, spray them with, uh, with a little bit of starch, whether it's Best Press Spray, Faultless Starch, um, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of starch products. Um, flatter by soak would be another one um, but you may want to prepare your fabrics ahead of time if that's what you normally do if it's not what you normally do you're perfectly fine if you don't prepare your fabrics before you cut by by uh, starching them and ironing them um, I did not starch and iron these I just went for it um, so once you cut your strips I think the one thing too is to not handle them too much or move them around too much um, so I usually keep this this is just a big quilt up square I usually keep this kind of on the right by the behind my ironing board and as I cut my strips I just pile everything up on this big quilt square so I can carry things around without kind of holding on to the top or moving them around a lot. A cookie sheet works, um, a big piece of poster board like what I had the monograms on um, would work great too but just having something to kind of pile your strips up on so as you take them to the machine to sew you're not handling them a ton because you're going to be moving around and you know cutting strip you know cutting sub cutting your strip sets so the less you handle your fabric the better once it's cut um, the other thing is again back to kind of fabric stretchiness so once you determine which fabric um, is more or less stretchy you want to make sure that the less stretchy fabric when you're mating things up and putting them through the machine that the less stretchy fabric is on the bottom, your stretchiest fabric is on the top because your feed dogs are pulling the fabric through your machine. That's, that's what pulls fabric through your machine. So you wanna make sure that the feed dogs aren't pulling on the stretchiest of, you know, your stretchiest fabric because you're gonna have a little more distortion then. Um, again, you could break all these rules and you're still, because of the nesting seams, gonna be completely fine. So, you know, don't be alarmed. Um, some folks, if you wanted to try this out, I think for this particular quilt would be overkill. Um, but some folks uh, pin their strips together. Um, some folks glue base their strips together so they stay perfectly, perfectly together um, as they sew them. Uh, for 
for me, I don't do either of those steps, but it's something I want you to be aware of that you can do. If you, if you really want to make sure you have perfectly pristine points, um, that may be of interest to you. Um, one book that I think is fantastic for talking about all of the different ways that you can work with strips, um, Susan Ake's book, uh, Start With Strips, is phenomenal in talking about all the different things and the extra steps you can do to prepare strips. Um, again, for this quilt, because everything nests, all of your seams nest, um, you're not going to have too much problem. So, you know, really the, the big thing is cut your strips, um, don't handle them too much, and make sure that the stretchiest fabric is on top when you're feeding it through the machine, and your least stretchiest is on the bottom, and that's the part that's touching the feed dogs, and you're going to have great success in... Uh, in uh, Putting your strip sets together. So we'll talk a little bit later about pressing our strip sets and sub cutting and then also how to incorporate the monogram for those of you who are doing the monogram. So thank you so much for joining in. Have a great Friday night. Take care.